Hey, what's going on? Um, I wanted to say, man, I'm, I'm glad I'm getting these videos up a little earlier. Uh, it's to your benefit, man. Just check it out prior to coming to class, man. I really think it'll help, okay? But anyway, man, let's go ahead and get started. Today, we're looking at absolute value functions. So let's dig in. All right, the central question here, man. How do you graph absolute value functions? How do you identify characteristics of absolute value functions and their graphs? All right. Um, so, what is an absolute value function, guys? This is a function with some form of absolute value of x in it. All right. Some form of the absolute value of x in it. The parent, all right, the parent, no transformations. Remember, we talked about that when we were looking at radicals, where the square root of x was the parent function, all right, of the square root of x and like the parent function, key root of x. Okay? So it's the same thing. There's no trans, there's no transformations. All right, it's just the square root of x, absolute value of square root of x. The vertex of the absolute value function is the highest or lowest point of the graph. Okay, so guys, there'll be several questions on your quiz and test. All right, well, it talks about uh, vertex of an absolute value function, the highest and lowest point of the graph. And the axis of symmetry, the axis of symmetry is the vertical line that divides the graph into mirror images. So like right here, the axis of symmetry would be this Y axis. All right, because it divides the left and the right side to mirror images of each other. All right. If an absolute value, excuse me, in an absolute value graph, it passes through the vertex, all right? So for absolute value, the axis of symmetry passes through the vertex, okay? Now, graphing absolute value. The graph of f of x equals the absolute value of x is shown, so this is it. All right, all absolute value graphs will be V-shaped. Their vertex, or slope, or steepness, and direction they uh, point can change. The general form of absolute value function is right here, all right? Now, guys, the thing that I'm showing you right here is this is all the same stuff we just did. The only difference is we had a radical. Well, this time we do not have a radical. It's just the absolute value. So the transformations will be the same as the last unit, all right? K is vertical, up or down. H is left or right. Remember, use the opposite sign. All right, so if I said left, h you would go to the right units and if it said right h or plus h you would move left units um the a value is still the steepness all right that's still the vertical stretch or compression and the plus or minus tells you if this thing opens up or down positive all right opens up negative opens down or really you won't see the negative the positive there excuse me all right just basically if it's negative it opens down okay if it if, it's, if there's no negative it opens up now um right here uh, let's go ahead and look at this graph. It says write an equation. Hey, yo, you guys read the directions, man. Please read the directions when you evaluate all this stuff. All right, just to your benefit so you know what's going on. Anyway, um, examples write an equation for the uh, following graphs and identify the vertex, the zeros, the intervals of increase and decrease, and compare the graph um, with the graph of y equals uh y equals absolute value of x okay so now what we're gonna do is this first part we gotta make an equation well so now um well let's go ahead and first let's identify our vertex our vertex right here remember that is the maximum or the minimum all right in this case it's the minimum all right this is zero zero so from zero zero we go one two excuse me and then we go down one two three so this point is going to be negative two, negative three. All right, negative two, negative three. Now knowing that, that's our point guys. Remember the vertex, if you look right here, the vertex is at HK. So we have HK, all right? So now what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna go back to this formula right here, all right? Um, because it opens up, I don't need a negative. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna take this equation, y equals a times the absolute value of x um, minus h. All right, and then plus k. 
all right, plus K. And I'm gonna substitute in my H and K. So I go Y equals A times the absolute value of X minus H negative two. All right, and then plus K in this case, negative three, so plus negative three. All right. Now, what I need to do here is I need to pick a point. All right, I need to pick a point so I can solve for A. All right, so I go and I pick a point. I see this point right here, we can see that. All right, or even that one. Okay, we can see that point. But since this point right here has a zero in it, that point right there being um, zero, negative two, I'm gonna use that. All right, I'm gonna use that. And this is gonna be X and Y. All right, X and Y. So what I do is I plug that into my equation for X and Y. So Y is negative two. All right, A is A, X is zero. And then right here, negative and negative is a positive two. And then right here, that's just negative three. And then we're gonna solve to complete our equation. So zero plus two is two, so that's two A minus three equals negative two. And then I'm gonna add three over to both sides. So negative two plus three is going to be negative one. All right, equals two A, because that cancel. And then I'm left with dividing by two. So A equals negative one half. So there's our equation. I have all my parts. I have H and K, all right? So, and I have my A. So my equation for this first one is going to be y equals, now you just write those parts, all right? y equals negative one half times the absolute value of x minus or x plus two, all right? Remember it's plus because negative, negative is positive, plus two minus three because positive, negative is negative. There's our equation for this graph, all right? So Hold on one second. I'm going to put it in the calculator and graph it so you can see that this is our equation. So I wanted to show you how to actually put it in the calculator. All right. Um, so remember, we said 0.5 or 1 half. So y equals, y equals uh, 1 half all right, or 0.5. You can do 0.5. You guys love your decimals. All right. I'm going to do 1 half though, just so you can see. Actually, it was negative 1 half, if I'm not mistaken. Was it negative? Yep, it's negative one half. So let me go back. Y equals negative. And when we add that three to both sides, negative two plus uh, three is going to be one. So one equals two a. And then again that cancels. So we divide by two on both sides, and a equals one half. Now. Now that we have our one half, we know what A is, we know what A is. All right, again, we know what A is, we know what H is, we know what K is. And we plug those parts in, all right? And then we'll have our equation. So like this, you have Y equals one half times the absolute value, X, all right, minus H. All right, minus H, so that's negative two, so negative and negative becomes a positive. So plus two, and then positive and negative becomes negative, so minus three. There's our equation right there. Now, what I want to do is I want to graph it so you can see that we're going to get the same graph as we have shown right here. Okay, so let me go to the calculator. All right, so I wanted you to see how I put it in. All right, so you have a reference. So um, you can do one half or 0.5. You know you guys have to do 0.5. All right, but I'm gonna do one half just because I like fractions. So I have one half times the absolute value. Now let me show you what the absolute value is. What you're gonna do is you're gonna press math. All right, then you wanna go to the right right here where it says number. All right, or in in you M, and there's your absolute value simply right there, A B S. All right, so we have the absolute value. All right, now some calculators will put ABS and then a parenthesis. Some will actually do the double bar right here and you put what you need inside. But we'll cover that more in class. So you have X, uh, what do we say, plus two because it went left two. And then outside of that, move your arrow, use your arrow right here to move outside. And then we went down three. 
So minus three. So there we go right there. And let's hit graph and see what we get. Boom, there we go. All right, there we go. So negative two, one, two, three. There's our vertex right there. All right. And then we also have a couple X intercepts. We're gonna pull off of this. All right. And yeah, so there's your graph. That's how you put it in. Let's go back to our worksheet. All right, so we have our equation. Y equals one half times the absolute value of X plus two minus three. Now our intercepts, we saw those on the calculator. All right, there's a couple of different ways where you can tell where the intercepts are. Um, one, you can look at them like we just saw. The other way is you could do second trace zeros, um, left bound, right bound, et cetera, et cetera. All right. So the intercepts, well, let me do the zeros first. All right. Well, yeah, let's do the zeros first. Looking back at the calculator, we see that we have this zero right here, uh, one, two, three, four. So four, zero. And we have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right. So this zero right here is going to be um, negative eight not right for some reason all right well negative eight zero and this one over here is four zero so those are our zeros all right so negative eight zero x equals negative eight and x equals four now uh intercepts intercepts guys are the zeros and this y intercept right there all right, so my intercepts are negative eight zero, um, four zero. All right, those are x-intercepts. My y-intercept is right here, zero. I didn't go left or right, so x is zero, and then down two, so zero, negative two. All right, those are my x-intercepts, those are my y. Now, we gotta talk about increase and decrease. Well, remember right here, um, not k, okay, uh, negative three. I don't know why I wrote K, but um, negative three. So remember increase and decrease. Increase and decrease is if you trace the actual line itself, all right, from left to right. Remember left to right. Um, all right, left to right. You can tell if the graph is going down and then back up again. All right, if you trace it, like I'm going down and then I'm going up. All right, so here's what we got. Remember, negative infinity is way out here to the left, and positive infinity is way out here to the right. And right here in the middle, we have this x value, negative 2. Alright? Now, absolute value is really simple, guys. Alright? Negative infinity, positive infinity, or whatever your x value is. You always use the x value. Alright? Where the change is on the minimum. Alright? So, for increase, well, that's this right side. From left to right, I'm going up. So, I'm going to say from negative 2 to positive infinity. There's our increase. All right. For our decrease, here's our decrease right here. All right. From left to right, I'm going down. So I, I can say negative infinity to negative two. There's my decrease. All right. Now, transformation. Transformation, now that we have our graph, guys, it is the exact same terminology as we used on um, the radicals last unit. All right. Right here out front, we have one half. All right, that one half tells us there's a uh, compression. All right, so there is a vertical compression. I put vert, so vertical compression or shrink Oops. by half. All right, and then we have plus two, which means we go left two. And then minus three means down three units all right so left two units down three units and that is how you answer this first problem okay so let's go ahead and jump over to the next one all right, i know i got a lot written right here so uh, let's jump to the next problem all right over here the first thing you need to do guys is identify your ver vertex so this is one two all right so x is two and one two three all right so up three and that's going to be h and k Okay, H and K. And then we need to just pick a point that we can see. All right, actual point we can see. So this point right here, we'll use that one. Or we'll use that one. 
All right, since I used the Y intercept last time, I'm going to use this one. All right, so this point is 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 1. So this point is 4, negative 1. And remember, that is X and that's Y. So equation all right, is going to be Y equals uh, A times the absolute value of X minus H oops, plus K. All right. So now we plug in everything and you have to solve for A. All right, once you have all these parts, X, Y, H, and K, and you can solve for A. So Y, I have negative one. Um, a is A. X is four, right there, X is four that we're using. H is two, keep that minus right there. And then K is three, so plus three. Now, what we do is solve for A. What well, order of operation right here, four minus two is two, so negative one equals two A, because that's multiplication, plus three. And then I'm going to subtract three on both sides. So that right there gives us negative four. And then I'm going to divide by two on both sides. So we have A equals negative two. So now that I have my parts for this equation, I have A, I have H, I have K, all right, right there. I can plug those things into this equation and I'll have my equation. So doing so, here's what I get. Y equals A times the absolute value of X minus H or minus two in this case, and then plus K plus three. All right. So again, and that confirmed, like see you got minus two, so that means right two, from zero, zero, right two, and then up three, one, two, three, so there we go. And then a negative says I flipped over, I said it's going down, it opens down, I flipped over the Y axis. Now, um, intercepts, intercepts. Well, here, all these intercepts right here, this one we can see, that intercept, that's uh, zero, negative one. So we have that one. All right, for these intercepts right here, we're gonna use our graphing calculator to find them, all right? Or we could just solve for them, all right? Um, because they're just zeros, all right? So you would use second trace, left bound, right bound. Uh, so let's go ahead and just find one of them. Well, let's find both of them. So I'm going to go back to the calculator. All right, so that problem, uh, we have negative 2 here. Let me clear this out. Negative 2 times, look, math, go over to the right for absolute value right there, 3. I mean 1, I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, and then we had x minus two because we went right two and then we went up three all right let me check it so there's our equation and then i'm going to hit graph right here and i want to talk about finding the intercepts all right we said that that was an intercept right there all right but we have these so here's what you do to find those zeros and intercepts x intercepts we're gonna go second trace and we want the zeros, all right, zeros. So left bound, all right. Remember that our um, x-intercept is right there, like right here, all right. So for my left bound, I just want my cursor to be on the left side of that point. So see how this indicator tells me I'm on the left side of that point? Then it says right bound. So move your cursor to the right side of that point. All right, so the point is like right there. So now I'm on the right side. Don't look at its top or bottom. Look at its left side. Now I'm on the right side of that point. And that, that cursor is on the right side of right here. Okay. So I hit enter again. And then it says guess. Oh, there's that indicator telling me I'm on the right side. See the first side. This is over here. The second side is right here. So that point is right there in the middle. And then I hit enter. And there we go right there. 0.50. All right. 0.50. So that's our first intercept, 0.50.
And then for our next one, we will do second trace again, zero, and then left bound. So the point's right here. I just want to be on the left side of that point. All right, so see how I'm on the left side? You don't want to stay over here because it might reference that one again. All right, so come on over. All right. Can you out here tickle me? I'm on the background. My, my baby's not right here. But anyway, uh, right bound. Move the cursor to the right side of that point. So now, again, the point's right there. This is on the right side of that point. So I hit enter again. So now we know the point is in between those two markers right there. And enter a third time for guess. And there we go, 3.5. So we have our points, it's 0 0.50 and 3.50. So I'm gonna go back to our page. So 0 0.50, all right, and 3.50, all right. And ironically, all right, not ironically, guys, our x intercepts are also our zeros. So one half zero, or x equals one half. And I'm just writing it in decimal, I mean fraction form, just so you can see, all right. All right, you have x equals one half, and you have x equals seven halves. All right, x, seven halves is 3.5, guys, so those are zeros. Now, increase and decrease. Again, you look at the graph from left to right. That's how you read the graph. So way out here to the left, you have negative infinity. Way over to the right, you have positive infinity. And right in the middle, you have two. So this side right here, trace the graph from left to right. This is an increase. So we define the increase from negative infinity. Let me use another color. From negative infinity to two. There's our increase. Our decrease is from here. Oh my gosh. And the decrease is from two to positive infinity. All right, like that. Now, last thing is our transformations. All right, the negative out front right here tells us reflect the x-axis. Actually, I'm going to type that this time because handwriting can be kind of sloppy. So, uh, we're going to go reflect the x-axis. Reflect. All right, reflect the x-axis. Uh, that two, that two out front right here tells us a vertical stretch by two, all right? And then the, the minus two tells us right two. And lastly, the positive three tells us up, three units, okay? So that is our transformations for number two. Now, um, there are some more examples right here where you gotta graph it. All right, you got a graphic, and guys, you just put those in your calculator. All right, you can do that. That's one way to do it. All right, well, here, actually, you know what? Let's just go ahead and do one real quick. Um, So this right here, first of all, we got to find a vertex. To find a vertex, we've got to go um, plus two, I mean, plus three, which means left three. So one, two, three, and then minus one means down one. So there's the vertex right there. Now, um, because the A is positive, that we determine that that is, it opens up, okay? It opens up. So now, and then we use this two right here. See the two, all right? The rise is two. All right, and let me, let me put it to you like this. And I, I kind of could have showed this on the front, but anyway, um, rise over run is your slope, all right? Slope equals rise over run. Well, in this case, this A value is 2. All right? So that means, you know, 2 is the same thing as 2 over 1. That's our slope, 2 to 1. So we're going to rise to 1, 2 over 1. There's our next point. Rise 2 over 1. All right, from this point, rise 2, go over 1. Rise 2, go over 1. And you can continue this process and actually make the whole graph without ever using a calculator. Rise 2 to the right one. Rise two to the right, to the right. One. Rise two to the right. One. Rise two over one. See how there's a perfect V right there. And so now, 
Let's connect the lines. All right, there's our graph, okay? Now, um, the one thing we need, I calculated for those intercepts right there. All right, so let's figure out what those intercepts are. But, oh, well, yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Oh, vertex, by the way, let me write that down. We said that is one, two, three, negative three. Um, down one, so all right, negative three, negative one. So now, for the intercepts, again, you can use your graphing device for that, okay? So, remember second trace, left bound, right bound. Um, so I'm going to do it real quick, just so I can kind of keep this video shorter than 25 minutes, because it's getting kind of long. Again, I put it in, I went ahead and put it in, all right, but I just wanted to give you a quick glance at um, finding the intercepts again. So, left bound. The, 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 X, it, the X value is right there, so left bound, and then right bound, just move on the right side of it. Alright, I know it's in between there, so there we go. Negative 3.50, and then a second trace again. Let's go over here, left bound, make sure I'm on the left side of that point. Right bound. And the points in between that 2.50. So negative 3.50 and negative 2.50. So back to our page. So zeros for intercepts. Um, negative 3.50 and negative 2.50. But we also have the y intercept, which is right here 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. All right, 0, 5. All right, those are our intercepts. Now, for the x values, guys, again, you know the intercepts, and you know they're all zeros. x equals 3.5, and x equals 2.5. Now, increase and decrease. What's way out here to the left? Negative infinity. What's way out here to the right? Positive infinity. What's right here in the middle? That x value. Always use the x value. All right, because you're defining all right, the distance of the increase and decrease. So the decrease is from negative infinity to negative three. And oops, that's the decrease. Sorry about that. Because again, left to right, I'm going down. So I didn't mean to write that right there, guys. Sorry for you, right? If you wrote that down. All right. Um, and then the increase is going up from left to right, negative three. Positive infinity. And then just list our transformations. Uh, we have a vertical stretch of two. Vertical stretch by two. We have a uh, left three, and we have down one. Now I'm gonna actually stop video right here. Um, you guys, it's, it's gotten long, so I'm gonna stop here and listen. I think if you um, watch the video prior to class, I think it'll help you out a lot because you'll have a pre-course, you know, um, an idea of what's going on in class. Okay, so man, you find time, check it out, and I hope this helps you prepare for this next unit test. Okay, and I will catch you later.